So welcome to episode two of Copper Chats. Today I have Connor Ryan, social media influencer, content creator, buddy cup owner. What else have you done? Full page. Don't know. Ireland stays. Ireland stays. Ireland stays. I actually don't have the password to that page. So is that why you haven't been posting it? Yeah, yeah. I can't find the password connected to an email that I don't know the password of. <laughs> it's a bit of a nightmare. I'm actually logged on with Snapchat now as well. Oh, it says contact support. That's I've never even heard of Snapchat support. <laughs> That's pretty much the Snapchat best, the issue. <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be talking about everything from how he got started in, in, into influence and what he was like as a kid. Um, he might touch on some controversial subjects, but we don't know about that yet. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> but the main thing we want to talk about is you know how he got into influence and how he built up such a massive following, which you do have across TikTok, Instagram. You're also pushing on YouTube as well. Um, yeah. And even, I think you're on Be Real as well, are you? No, I'm not on a Be Real. We had this discussion now. I'm not on Be Real because I just don't see see it being as much of a hype or anything to do it's with more, business. Yeah, really, it's more of a know? friends thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and obviously my main source of income is from social media. So if I'm looking at Be Real, like, how am I going to make any sort of money from that? You know, it'll be a bit, yeah. bit hard, you know? Absolutely. We're going to dig deep into all those things. We're going to have a look at his Instagram. We're, we do have the quick fire questions by camerakit.ie. Thanks again for the lads for sponsoring. Mm. So let's get into it. Let's go. Thanks for having me. So Connor. What were you like as a kid? Because I know you, right? <laughs> I've spent plenty of time with you and you're mad. You're like a ball of energy. We are, we are always like that or is that just something that kind of came out of the influence and thing? Um, no, definitely I was always a ball of energy um, in school. I, I love to talk, I love to shout, I love to scream. I might have a bit of ADHD in me, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like knows, but... Like, my legs and all going here. <laughs> Mm, I want to stand up. Um, but yeah, no, I was always mad. I always liked doing what I'm not meant to do. Um, <laughs> we know that. We, we across everything, across everything, whether it be in school when I was younger, like be the best I could be in school. My mom and dad saying it to me. I was like, nah. So I was like, to go against it. I'd always like to challenge everything. So yeah, I've always been mad and weird, as you call me. Yeah. <laughs> Am I the weirdest person you've ever met? Yes, yeah. I think really? so. Yeah, you're up there. Anyway, there's, there's been a, I'm, I'm, like, there's been a, there's been a few that I've met, but you are definitely up there. Hundred percent. Um, but then, so you're obviously massively popular on social media, and you're a ball of energy in school. But we, we like as popular in school as you are now with, with social media. And um, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I'd like to think so. I had a good, good group of friends from say, obviously in secondary school, and when I was in primary school, I can't really remember too much about it. But in, in secondary school, you kind of click with all your friends and stuff. So. I used to have a bit of crack with everyone in school and um, used, didn't used to be quiet, didn't used to be like separate myself from any sort of group. So definitely I would say that I was, I wouldn't say popular in school, but I got on with everyone, always having a bit of the crack and always trying to do mad stuff and yeah. just being controversial in school even as well, you know. But, um, but I never pushed myself in school enough. If you're going to ask me how I did in school, am I thinking ahead here? <laughs> you're <laughs> jumping way ahead. I wasn't even going to ask that question. Yeah, I never, um, I'd love to do school again, to be honest with you. I'd love to do secondary school again because I feel like I did have an awful lot of potential but I just got led in different directions. Not bad directions, but just always thought of just having the crack instead of actually getting stuck into the books. Yeah, but you, you were saying there about, you know, you'd love to go back in school, but you did you jump back in then to do a business course. How'd you get on that? Um, so I actually have, I have two, like one year degrees, or not one year, sorry, like they're like eight, nine weeks courses. So I started myself to get into them because I couldn't see myself doing the long-term course yeah. at straight from school. So I did a, a certificate in business management, sorry, a bit, certificate in marketing. Um, and this is a couple of years back, this is like four or five years back. Yeah. And then that was in NCI and then in IBAT then I done one in event management as well. Savage. So they kind of all kind of correlate together and match together what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and then only two years ago, the start of COVID then I said, right, this is a good time for me to dive in and do a, a level eight. Yeah. Um, I now have the level seven, paused the last year because coming back out of COVID, everything started to get the ball rolling. I just didn't have the time. Yeah. So I was turning the laptop in in the front room and going back in then and doing my own thing, yeah. eating food and eating curries and stuff like that. So I have to finish that one more year to get the level eight. Mm. Um, but luckily enough, time is on my side and I do have, I don't need to rush into it. I don't need to get the level eight right about now, but I do want to get it. And it's more importantly for my mum and dad, if I get that, then there's a lot. Look, I have it. Just give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. You know? Get off my back. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously they wanted me to just get that degree and then do whatever I want so you could always fall, fall back on it. But, and I will. I will get it eventually. Yeah. And I'm sure, the, you know, the influencer lifestyle and the fact that you can make money from a phone, it's not seen or acknowledged by a lot of parents. No, no, definitely not. No. Not at all. So how... We're on out eating. <laughs> um, oh, the stuff like, yeah, they get it taken off me and put it in the other room. <laughs> They'd be trying to have a conversation with me and I'd be looking in different directions on the phone, head elsewhere. You'd be talking to me as well. I'm yeah. just like, just thinking of what I'm going to do on my phone next. Like, it's, it takes yeah. over your life. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. How many hours did you say you spend a day on your phone? Oh, screen time wise? Yeah. 10 hours plus. 
That's sick. If like t- this morning up at you, I, I was about six on the phone in bed before you wake up. Got on the phone before you brush your teeth, it's mad. Like. <laughs> You're just constantly on it, aren't you? Constantly on it. So from six till even six tonight, that could be ten. It could be pushing. It could be a record today. It could be, it could be fifteen hours today. That's mental. Yeah, it's scary. You're probably going for a little nap though. I couldn't. Could you not? No, no. I'd go for a nap. No, I'd, I'd, if I go for a nap this evening, say five o'clock, I'd, I'd just roll over and I wake up, and I'll wake up tomorrow morning. Fair enough. Definitely. So I can't. Yeah, but it's a busy lifestyle. It is. I love it. I wouldn't have any other way. Daddy, but we will touch on that later on in the podcast about you know what your your average day kind of looks like and, and yeah. how much work actually goes into it. But I want to take it back to you know. So you finished school. When did you start with the kind of? When did you start to become popular on social media? So obviously there was you know we went through Bebo, Facebook. Me and you are the same age, so we would have gone through the same kind of social media platforms. Would have been Bebo, Facebook, Instagram, yeah, and TikTok. So when was it that you started to kind of push yourself or promote yourself on social media? Um, it's a good question. Not push myself. No, I was always addicted to my phone. Always addicted. I've always said that even when I'm doing other podcasts and stuff. I was always even addicted slightly to be able to be honest with you. Yeah. You know when Beeble where you can collect loves. Remember they you share love, you have three loves a day. <laughs> you know when Valentine's Day was in unlimited loves? <laughs> I used to try to get mine up like thousands and upon thousands. And then my ex at the time, years ago, we broke up. She fucking hacked me Bebo and deleted it. And I had thousands of loves. Like, <laughs> like what age were you? I was devastated. Ah, oh, probably like 12, 13 maybe, m- even you? younger. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and it was, she was my other half and all as well then. On Bebo, remember that? You used to have another half. <laughs> you're like. top 16. Oh, yeah, you're top 16. And I was absolutely gutted. Like, and at that time, I think then I just gave up on it for a while or I started again. But I'm always addicted to like scores and stuff like that. Like scores so or you like- consider yourself competitive? Like. Yeah, on your, I mean, even on my Nokia, you could actually see how many texts you've sent years ago. So I used to be always just flat out texting people, what's up, what's up, to all your recent contacts. <laughs> Mad. Madness. And um, with social media, I started touching back on the question. I think, I think probably around sixth year, back then, sixth year after college kind of finished, uh, or, or after college, after school kind of finished, I'd say it kind of started to fizzle in. I don't even think influences was around too long before I dived on it. Yeah. Um, but I was just always addicted to my phone and always doing things. And then when it came out then onto the Instagrams, I'd be able to talk on your stories then, I just, Got, got into that, but yeah. even at the start of Instagram, when I started, where you could just post your start, your following versus your following people, I always wanted to get that up. So I used to just be following and unfollowing people from from the get go to get that following up. Next of all, then I had about eight thousand followers, and they were kind of following in because people, other people were saying, "Why well, are following him?" Mm. And then it just took off from there. I went away then to New York, and like New York, where was I go? Where did I go again? Toronto. Oh yeah, Toronto. I am, um, and I just took off from there, kind of just putting it up online, kind of like showing every day today what I'm doing, and it just fell into an addiction. And an addiction then just came with doing different things, mad stuff, videos constantly. It's like a, it's like a YouTube vlog basically, but twenty four seven. Yeah. So just always to do it. And there's a question I wanted to ask you, and you know, it's a bit of a controversial question, and if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. But did being in a relationship with someone who had a big straight into it what, like? straight into it <laughs> did being did, did being in a relationship with someone that had a big following kind of say right this is what i want to do mm. this is what i want to pursue this big time yeah well that, definitely like it, it kind of worked because they're both on level level power at one stage whereas we both had the passion for going down this same road yeah and same route so we're able to bounce back and forth off each other but with doing that then comes all sorts of controversy and different things that when things go wrong everyone knows it goes wrong yeah. and if we're fighting or something like that everyone knows we're fighting so it did at that time and when it was good it was great but now looking back on it i'd never want to do it again mm. with, with broadcasting so much of the relationship or anything like anything at the moment putting up any sort of relationship online i do if people are in a relationship with two people that are going down the same road if you if you bounce them back off you that's only going to come with some sort of negativity so I try to stay away from that as much as I can. Of course, the small bit here and there is fine and having the crack, but we were putting everything online together. Yeah. Everything, so. Your entire life is online. Yeah, and yeah. And then it gives people then a platform then to ask what's going on when yeah. you think, how? why does this person need to know what the fuck's going on? No. But they're saying, well, you put everything online, so we deserve to know. We're watching every move. So then you're kind of like, oh, here. Yeah, it's kind so of. There's no way of just fizzling off. And if you fizzle off and stop doing it while you are still together, oh, just creates rumors and drama and all sorts. So yeah, because that was my next my next question was then like you know how do you deal with the hate that that or the negativity that just that you get online? Cause everyone experiences it, especially at such a high level as yourself. Yeah, um, how we deal with it? I'm I'm lucky lucky enough that it goes over my head, and the majority of the time I laugh because 
it's everyone's at home looking and just giving out about what I'm doing, but they can't stop watching what I'm doing. And if I annoy you that much, why would you not block me? But they're just actually genuinely obsessed with what I'm doing to give out about it yeah. because they want to fit into this group of negative people where, oh yeah, like look, we're all giving out about him. We're all in this same family. Like, but they're just sitting at home, fucking sitting there sweating. <laughs> like Laura Carmen's just sitting at home. <laughs> I'm gonna show you off them. Like, oh, yeah, honestly, I'm looking enough. I do think it's absolutely horrible, and I do think that website, Tattle Life, is absolutely horrible as well. But if it gives people a platform to give out and feel better about themselves, then so be it. Give out about it. It's not gonna knock me. But some person that you are knocking online on this website and might not be as strong minded and, and headstrong as myself, and it could really just hurt them and yeah. ruin their days, basically. So look, leave them to it. But just put yourself in the other person's shoes or even their, someone like their son or their daughter's shoes and if someone was online talking about them, how would you actually feel, you know? Yeah. But again, not much can be done about it. All you have to do is ignore it and look at it as jealousy. Yeah, because uh, like a lot of people do forget that there is someone behind the comment, like or the, the, not behind the comment, but there is someone on that platform. Like there is a son or a daughter or a brother, sister, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. There's someone there that's being targeted. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. And there is talks now, I don't know if, if you think this would be a great idea or not, but there is talks now about, you know, you have to verify your account with ID. Yeah. So you can't set up fake accounts. So if you are abusing someone, it takes away that an 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 anonymity. Sorry, that was a difficult word to say. And then I sound, sound like Nemo. <laughs> um, but it, it takes away their anonymity and their ability to just throw shade without any repercussion or, or anything like that. Like, that'd definitely be something you'd probably get behind, wouldn't it? Yeah, like the same sort of people that would be giving out death online then would nine times out of ten have someone that's lost their family like in their to suicide or something yeah. like ridiculous it always kind of just like, just like what is going on here you know yeah. and they share then they pay the house stories and stuff like that and then they're going on to this other website and slaying people but definitely i've mentioned that before a few times about having to um upload your passport to create an account it's just too easy to create an account no. and just give out death like you know yeah. like if you block someone on tiktok for saying something harmful to you or something like and you're just like oh fuck off like wrecking me head takes them 10 minutes to make another account and they're doing it again you're like yeah. jesus christ it's now, a never ending cycle, like. Yeah, it's a never ending cycle, but it's just it's just crazy, you know. There's there's some things that like you shouldn't be getting away with saying online. I'm all for having a crack, I'm all for slagging, I'll take it on the shin all day long, but some things some people say are quite deep and quite harmful, you know. Yeah. There was one the other day on TikTok where I was doing work with a, a skip company. A skip company, that's a, a business that's actually located in Kulak. Mm. So they reached out and said, Would you like to do something? So I put it in the buddy cup chat and said, um, hey guys, anyone want to skip? We don't need a skip. So one of the colleagues in the chat, um, one of the workers in the chat basically said, yeah, we'll have it. So I went around there, skip was in the garden, recorded away and did the TikTok. But then I posted on TikTok and then this other creep of a person found out the address and was like Connor Ryan's house with the skip outside and the address on the screen. Like surely, and I got like 20 people to delete it and I got a notification back off TikTok and I was like, no, nothing harmful has been done here. Like there's no, like nothing's gone breaking the guidelines. Like, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's mad. People sharing your address is nuts. Like That's bonkers. I know. No, and it's very it's odd. Creepy, like, like. You know? Yeah, because then the like, neighbours and stuff see this TikTok then and they're saying, what is going on here? Like, But yeah. the majority of the comments on that were saying, this is a step too far. But still, how easy is it to get away with sharing someone's address online is crazy. Like, you know? It's mental. Um, just before we jump into the quick fire questions, um, I did want to ask you, have you any kind of stories of kind of, you know, so obviously you've become almost like a mini celebrity. Like we've gone on trips and stuff like that. Yeah. People are stopping and asking to get in photos with you, which I think is fucking bonkers. Because I look at you, it's just, you're just me, mate, Connor. Like, yeah, just um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, gobshite. <laughs> but like, you know, you see kids, and especially kids, kids love you. Mm. Um, and it's obviously, we, we will touch on kind of, you know, the, the elements of, of what you do and, you know, whether it's Curry Tuesday or Chipper Thursday, um, the Buddy Cup, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the maddest stories you've had from like just mad fans? Like, Fans, mad fans. Um, just you do get some oddballs then as well. I was in the cock and bull the other day, right? And this is very odd. This this is a bit strange, right? I was there with Ethan, and we were sitting there. And it's it an odd place, though. To be fair, cock and bull, but anything can happen. This is a bit extreme because I was just completely shook. I was like, "What?" She came over, locked, yeah. And the two of us sitting there, and we were yapping away. She's like, "Connor, hey, how's things? Remember me from outside in the cock and bull, taking my sunglasses off?" And I was like, "No," in my head. But I was like. Yeah, yeah, what's the story? How's things and all blah blah blah? And then you sent the video to my daughter saying hello, etc. etc. And I was like, Yeah, that's fine then. And then she goes, Tifa, excuse me now if I'm inter interrupting here. But Connor tried to get a moment with me. <laughs> 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 I 
was like, but again, I was completely shocked. This never happened. <laughs> never happened because Pierce was sitting there. I'm always there, at Pierce. And I was like, Pierce, you've seen him before. I've never seen him before. I was like, yeah, he tried it on with me before. Um, now I don't mind. It. I wish us all the best and stuff like that. But I was like, what? The what? Absolute looper. <laughs> so anyway, can we get a can we get a picture? Get a picture then, and just strolled off. I'm just like, what the fuck happened? I don't know if that never happened before. And she's just like. Mm, yeah, <laughs> no, it didn't really happen. Like, didn't happen at all. Yeah, people are nuts. Like, people are mad. But you haven't had any stalkers yet, or anyone? No, stalker was stalker was. Believe it or not, I've never touched on this one before. Remember the thing about the buddy cup in Dunleary? Yes, that <laughs> oh. <laughs> freak of nature. I don't know if I said that in a podcast before. I maybe have, but I'll say it again. So I was meant to get a lease out in buddy cup and for a place out in Dunleary at the fish shack. This is going on months on end. Yeah. Now this is an ultimate. This should have its own show, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so this girl, yeah, she said that she worked in Fish Shack, blah, 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 brought me out there and showed me the Fish Shack on the pier out in Delary. Your buddy coach Charlie goes, there, here's our work van. You can have the keys and stuff like that. We can use the same electricity. I was like, lovely, this is great. This went on months on end. She just went back to the council, made up this fake fella called Derek that worked in the council. Let it on, let it on, let it on. Next of all, then we're meant to open like two, three days later. No, two weeks later. And she goes to me, oh, Derek's wife has passed away, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going down to the house now because I'm going to be minding the kids and stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, Jesus, so sorry about this, blah, blah, blah. But um, long story short, there was no such thing as Derek. <laughs> no such thing as her working in Fish Shack. She had no one there at all. And one day she brought me and my mom and dad out there and sat us down for food. And... I just don't, I can't get my head around because it's me being stupid. She just kind of yapped away to us and walked back outside. But I was under the illusion she was the manager there. She's never worked there. I was like, what's going on here now? She made a fake certificate off the pier um, to say that I, I can operate on the pier. And um, she dropped fake keys into my letterbox. Fucking Did you ever find out what the keys are for? No, no, no. But a big use, like a big thing. Like it was like something Dumbledore would have. Like big dope, <laughs> loads of keys on walking it. Around. And I was like, um, what the fuck is going on? But that is the weirdest skit thing. And there's more to that story, but it's kind of complicated because there's so much going back and forth. But I went on for about two months. And next of all, then it just all fell through. I went to the guards and stuff like that. And then she said it was her ex. And I was like, what is going on here? But she's a skit. You know who she, she is. And she is an ultimate skit. And I hope she gets locked up. She, I, it was actually, we got to the stage, it was actually funny because she went so deep with this lie and a scam. How like, much time do you think that would have taken up? Like? I don't know. She made a fake email address and all. It was derekcouncil at gmail.com. The fact idiot, idiot, there were you. Idiot. But she had a signature and all down the bottom and all. And I was like, oh my God. And then when I showed, I think I showed Brian in shop then. And Brian in shop said, oh, there's a spelling mistake there. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm an absolute dope. <laughs> Stalker was, that's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. And I don't think anything could top that because that was, that was ridiculous. Like, that was out there. Like. A laminated certificates to say that I can operate on Dunleary Pier. She, she got a laminated. A laminated and all with the logos and everything on it and the signature. And I was like, it's actually an impressive lie, you know? But then I got in touch. I was away in Tenerife with, um, with Darren. Or was it with you? No, it was with Darren. Darren. And I rang the council. And I was like, naming all these people. And everyone was like, no, no, no. And I was like, oh no, Derek might be still off because his wife passed away. There's no Derek that works here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? And then she told me at the end of the phone call. She was like, if you put the, the trailer on the pier, it will be towed off. Like, like none of this is true, blah, blah, blah. Um, now I was gonna go to guards and stuff about this, but I was like, oh, here, she's an absolute lunatic. And she knows where I live as well. So I was like, just leave her. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous like but if I ever see her out again my good god I will make a holy show of her you know I'll just say shoplifting shoplifting <laughs> 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 what hell. that's an odd story that is a mad old story uh, so I remember you know you were in fairness now you did count your chickens before they hatched mm -hmm. oh, I had a countdown and all up yeah oh uh, yeah like you were you were this is happening and there was no like full conf confirmation or, or you know proof of it but at the same time like you know <laughs> you, you have to give her credit like the, the depth of of, of this oh, of this lie kept and it. kept denying it I was like there's no thing as Derek she was like there is I was like there was not <laughs> like what's going on you have to give, you have to handle it yeah. <laughs> yeah and then she went thing and said something absolutely ridiculous to me as well like yeah I was away on holidays and she goes someone's after knocking on my ma's doors did you send someone down to my house and I'm like what is wrong with you like what is actually wrong with your head like I was like no not at all like 
I don't give a shit. Like, I'm glad I just found out the truth. Like, but then she was like, don't you come near my house. I was like, I'm not even in the country. <laughs> I was like, you need serious help. You Absolutely. need Jesus, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I would love the name and shame. <laughs> Believe it at that, you know? Believe it at that. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to jump into the quick fire questions sponsored by CameraKit.ie. Uh, I just wanted to say a massive thanks to CameraKit. They've looked at me a numerous amount of times. Um, I know I mentioned it in the previous podcast, but I remember even shooting some stuff with you. This is or had a, a lens had broken on me or a camera broken on me or something like that and last minute.com I think I rang them at like eight o'clock in the morning we had a shoot at like 10 and straight away no problem we'll get you sorted mm-hmm. um, and got, got to hand it off them so we're going to jump into the quick four questions um, are you ready for this? I'm ready right. how long do I have to answer this? like just straight on the spot like if you can yeah okay alright so Connor Instagram or TikTok? oh um Instagram for, oh no, TikTok, TikTok. TikTok? Yeah. Are you on Be Real? I am not on Be Real. Story or real? Real. Curry Tuesday or Chipper Thursday? Curry Tuesday. What's your favorite? Where's your favorite curry from? Uh, lemon tree, I need more. Your need favorite more. filter? Face swap. <laughs> need, I'm hooked on it. <laughs> Rather promote food or promote clothing? Food. Who's, uh, the, who's your favorite influencer that you're following now? Um, oh, that's a good question. Oh, there's a fellow on TikTok that I follow. Um, I think his name's Jamie or something like that. He's another food reviewer. I think he's very good. Yeah. Gives bad reviews. I find it very hard to give a bad food review. You know? You're just mad, mad for food. You need anything. Food in general, you know? <laughs> like, I, it's got the decision of just showing off the food, not actually just like saying this is the class, but majority of the time the food is little. But that fellow has a great idea. He's doing a roast. Um, I think his name's Jamie. Yeah. I think so. We'll stick his, we'll stick his thing yeah, up on yeah, the Yeah, he's very good though. Yeah. Very, very good. He's from Cork or something, I think. Mad accent and all. <laughs> Professional or self-made content? Self-made. More rigid. Um, podcast or audiobook? Neither. Don't have to. I, I like doing a podcast, but <laughs> I just don't have the, I don't have the attention span to do any of that. Sound. Sun or snow holiday? <laughs> Sun. <laughs> Are you mad? Snow holiday. <laughs> Split my head open again. <laughs> One person or brand you'd love to collab with? Um, Nike for the likes of clothing or like McDonald's or something like that for... Yeah, you'd, you've worked with McDonald's before, haven't you? I have. Was it the spicy chicken nuggets? Spicy chicken nuggets and the chicken Big Mac. So you know, I'm waiting on another collab down for them as well. Are you? Um, but not my own. Like imagine like an Arlen Jones or a Conor Ryan burger or something like that. Something yeah. deadly, you know? Yeah. That'd be, um, well, that'd be huge. That'd be pretty major. <laughs> I think it'd be the first time they've ever <laughs> done know, anything like that. You know the way he does like they do like a Travis Scott burger and stuff like yeah. that. Like something like that, you know? So <laughs> you <consider> <laughs> <laughs> <Excuse> me. Thanks for picking that up. <laughs> so you consider yourself the Travis Scott of Ireland, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so I get like. those good ones every time. <laughs> Perfect, so that was the end of the quick fire questions with camerakit.ie. Again, thanks a million lads. We're gonna jump in now to an Instagram deep dive. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun, is right. So, let me have a look. What's my score are those quick fire questions, do you reckon? What do you mean, there's no score, man. Oh, just wanna win. <laughs> we'll see, we'll, we'll time everyone. At the very end, we'll see how long it took them to do it. I know Evan took, he took his time on them. Um, but you flew through 12. Not 12, 12 questions, 12 just questions. easy. Yeah. Did you not get questions on Instagram? I did, but I'm incorporating them in other ways. Oh, shit. Unless you want me to bring them up. No. Okay. <laughs> Keep them off the page. <laughs> so, I picked this post. Um, this is from the 4th of September, 2021. Because I want to ask you, you know, is this something you're going to continue to pursue? Or is this kind of, are you leaving this in the, in the, in the, in the past? Or, you know, what way are you going to approach this? So this is the thumbnail from the first Curry no Tuesdays. Yeah. Um, do you remember we did that tour around Ireland and we were doing it as a YouTube series? Yeah. Is YouTube kind of gone in the water or, or you know, is, is that something you're going to continue on to focus on or are you going to try and grow on that as a platform? Yeah. I'd love to kind of possibly create like a new type of, it has to be food related, food, yeah. hotel, stuff to create content within. Um, I'd love to create some sort of new YouTube series. Yeah. Now, the only thing which YouTube is, it's kind of like a bigger TikTok now. Yeah. Where, and it's so much more involved, as you know, obviously yourself, with editing and stuff like that. It's such a pain. Yeah. And there's so much more to it. Instead of editing on TikTok and up you get, you could do 20 sort of TikToks before you could edit one YouTube video. So it's the only sort of thing. And the, when, when you think of it then, are you going to get more eyes on TikTok? 
and more sort of opportunities by chosen the 20 TikToks instead of putting your heart and soul into YouTube. Yeah. I know you can get the AdSense and stuff out of it, but will it be really worth it? But definitely, I think we kind of, when we did that, what episode was that? It was the very first episode. That very was the first episode. So we fin- we started that in the winter. Yeah. And we went right up to Christmas. Yeah. And then we kind of fizzled off when the weather got ba- better again. We fizzled off. Um, we did Tenerife. That was meant to be a, a curry Tuesday X Tenerife. Do you remember? Oh yeah. Well, that didn't happen. That, well, no, we had a curry, but it was an Indian curry. Do you remember? The one upstairs? Yeah. That was lovely though. That was gorgeous. That was lovely, right beside Harry's Park. Yeah, we felt absolutely rotten afterwards. Oh God, in bits. We still oh. went out. <laughs> still it wasn't out. one night we stayed in. No, 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 no. no. So we were locked from the airport. That's actually a funny story as well. That's the flight. Yeah, no way. <laughs> that, was, that was torture. The thought of me missing another flight actually sends me into a different, like, like a spasm or something. <laughs> I'm dreading. That will happen to me again, but it's so rough. Will. So we were only talking about, you know, maybe starting the series back up again and go down to Kerry or something was the first one. And I just keep thinking we're going to be in an airport together and that just doesn't mix. I think we're best off driving. We're best off driving. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But then again, what can happen in the car? Because you said on the way here, how did I get my license? <laughs> you know? He's a brutal driver for anyone that's listening or watching. No penalty you see points. him on the road, just avoid him. <laughs> you don't get any penalty points because you don't move. <laughs> just wait. You are the person that I'm screaming at in my car being like, move. <laughs> um, so... The next one I was going to ask you about is this, which is from the episode you did of Love Bites for RTE. Love that. You love that? Very good. What was that like? It was deadly. Like it was a serious set, kind of like this with the cameras all around the place and the setup. Um, Quite staged is the only thing. So it was stop and go. Um, But it did. It flowed nicely. You know, sometimes I kind of don't. Like they sent me the kind of script, like kind of you sent me the script. Sometimes I don't look like looking at the script because it over complicates things. I'd rather just like you give me the question, give me two seconds to think of the answer and just get it straight out there. You know, there's no point the answer sitting in my head somewhere and knowing exactly what's going to come up. But I loved it. I'd love to do more on telly. I'd love to get the opportunity maybe to get onto the radio. Because I've yeah. got a face for a radio, do it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I'd, I'd definitely love to um, to get more involved on the TV. Like, I could go two avenues. I could hopefully go down the fashion side of things, travel side of things, and then I'd definitely food as well. You know, I'm not a good chef, but I'd love to learn how to be a good cook, you know? Well, that could be a series in itself, you know, cooking with Connor. Definitely. You know, I made um, I made a scrambled egg yesterday. You see all my close friends, what my mum texts me? No. She, oh, I have to read this out. So <laughs> I made scrambled egg yesterday in the pan. Usually I make it in the microwave. So this is what my mom texts me, right? And we're I knew, in the pan. I knew she was gonna text me. Knew she was gonna text me, but the extent of what she said to me is absolutely shocking. She goes, you left the kitchen window open, you muppet. <laughs> Fair. Plus, you can buy me a new small pot. I'm not cleaning it, or else you're out of the house. <laughs> and I just text back, I actually text back, I said the wrong name, I goes, I got Milo a snack box. I didn't even get Milo a snack box, I got George, but I was just shitting it. <laughs> Oh my god, you muppet. I was like, God, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Support the parents there, that's yeah. what you want. Um, there is a picture, or it might be a video, I did the video anyway, um, that I wanted to, I can't find it. In other words, you post about four or five times a day, don't you? Active. Yeah, so. You have to be. I, I'd be searching for hours, but I will find it and I will post it for, for, for everyone that's watching the video. But it's um, the day we went out to auto class. And you got your man the car. Legal. Favourite moment of my life ever. Yeah. How, how was that? Oh, it was unreal. Unbelievable. It was only after opening the Buddy Cup, so it was absolutely flying at the moment. So there was plenty of plenty of sales running through it. So I said, instead of getting myself something nice, treat someone else something that I'll never have the actual the gap or the opportunity to do again. Well, I possibly could, but I do- dived on it um, and got her the car. And she still has the car now as well. It's actually a gorgeous car. It's a lovely car. So nice as well. 191 Little Golf. Um, it's deadly. Yeah. Some moment, wasn't it? You were crying. <laughs> you were crying. I got a little bit emotional. It was a, it was a lovely moment. Seeing your, your mom, so she was so nervous when she, she first came come in. in like, yeah, I know. She was your like, feet were like stuck. I was like, move, move get the shoe, get in. Uh, like. But once she, once she got into it, then she was just, yeah, over the moon. Yeah, That's she was like that in the car then and all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, um, and then we went out the next day then to collect it with my dad, um, and drove back over on the motorway as well. She doesn't like the motorway, so she doesn't like automatics either. Uh, no, well, that's not an automatic. Isn't it? No, it's gears. Gears. Oh, so it? when I'm driving, ha, you should see how bad I am at driving a car with gears now at the moment. And you're bad in an automatic. I'm not? Yeah. I I, well, I don't cut out. I don't cut out. That's some rain. <laughs> that's some rain. I think we might take a little break. Uh, and hopefully that rain will ease that's up a little bit. Come in. <laughs> so the rain has stopped. Thank no, God. Thank, thank God it did. Yeah, because that was levels. Why is there a cross in this in here? Huh? A cross. What do you mean across? Why don't you ask me, Jake? Come on. What you ask me? Come on. You saying things? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of I wanted to take it back then to you know 
for anyone that's listening that kind of wants to do what you do, which is, you know, content creator, influencer, um, besides the other businesses that you own, because we will touch on them now in a minute, but like, what's your day-to-day -day routine? Like, I, I know you, I could ring you 50 times throughout the day and you're never once stopped. No. You're never once kind of just sitting around. And when you are, it's for about 10 or 15 minutes when you put the phone away just, just to give yourself a break. Yeah. So like how involved, like, you know, how involved is it to become an influencer? And like, how, what is your daily routine? So daily routine definitely will be from start to finish. Like there's no kind of like, I'm finished now. Like, you know, when people do work on nine to five, they get to like kind of finish and chill out with their family and stuff like that. At the moment with me, that I'm kind of ch trying to chase everything so much to try better myself constantly. It's like easily from the minute you get up in the morning till could be 11 o'clock at night before you finish your phone. Mm. Edit wise, eating wise, food wise. Obviously the likes of the Chinese and stuff that would take up a lot of time. Editing it as well as the worst part of it. The eating is great. Yeah. Um, but morning routine would be up, coffee, shower, out. Some days then I won't get back to the house then till nine o'clock yeah. that night, you know? So I'm sick to death of putting these in the car. Sick of it. <laughs> yeah, but stop putting in 20 euro at a time. Cause, but I can't, I just hate even standing there. I'd love like, you know, when you get in the car wash, like someone come over and fill the car for you. It's real American thing that. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did he do it over there? I think so. Don't they have petrol pump attendants? So they used to anyway, years ago. Petrol pump attendants? Yeah, yeah. They fill I'll, the car. I'll tell you something, if Instagram around and goes, that's my new job. <laughs> Imagine putting in a euro a day, just filling up like that. If you put, if you put 200 cars through at a euro a pop, 200 quid. Yeah. No one robbed that idea. <laughs> you just spread it now. That's it. You know, it'll like become a service. If you own the garage or something like that and it was 80 cent, they get, and then 20 cent goes to the garage. That's a good old business, you know? Yeah. You know? Handy commission. You can easily come away with a hundred quid, a couple of hundred quid a day. Easily, you know? I imagine there's two of you. Two in each place, that'd be a great business. Absolutely. You know? You'd be, you'd be minted by the end of it. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because you've loads of time for that. No, I've no time. No time. But I, I, like, as busy as I am, and as much as I moan and say I'm tired all the time, I wouldn't change it yeah. at all. I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed with it. You know, I'm obsessed with, with going from A to B to C to D to E all throughout the day. I'm up up early training boxing, up early doing this, going football training that night then. It's just 100 miles an hour, but I absolutely love it. Yeah. And um, don't get me wrong, I do need to slow down because every like once in a month or every se every second month, I'd have a mad crash where I'm just absolutely zonked. Yeah. Wrecked tires, you know. Yeah, and you end up starting to get sick and everything, don't you? Sick, and then I'd have, I'd, I would have, like, I'm a very good sleeper as well, where I could actually go to bed at nine o'clock and I'd wake up at two o'clock the next day. I can easily sleep for 14, 15 hours, and then I wake up recharged and ready to go again for a month. <laughs> Not a bother. <laughs> talking a million miles an hour. Oh, God, even when I speak, it's a million miles an hour. It's non stop, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sound effects and all. <laughs> <laughs> that Coke Zero or something. <laughs> Leg it's nothing on. to do with the three coffees you've had. Three, three sources of coffees. caffeine. Oh. Two coffees and a can of Monster. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, getting into this is not something that's easily done. No. Um, I think it's very person dependent. You know, you either have it, you don't. You need to be, as we talked about, you know, able to handle the negativity. Um, is there any advice you give to someone that says, like, you know, their ambitions, especially with younger people now, and they're saying, like, oh, I want to be an influencer when I'm older. Mm -hmm. Is that viable? can you just say that is what i want to do or mm. is it something that has to just happen for you like obviously you can push and promote yourself and constantly be creating content mm -hmm. but like you know some people like they're creating amazing content but they're just not they just don't have that factor yeah so is that something you'd recommend kids to say to kids like look do what you want to do and, and see how it goes but don't bank on it or would you say give it your all we'll give it yeah a, a bit of both i suppose it would definitely be something to kind of have as a part-time thing at the start yeah and always have your full-time there because you're guaranteed your money coming in and of course you need money to live yeah so have that there and then when you go home then and if you are that obsessed with it just always give it 110 mm. percent from start to finish come up with new ideas don't look at someone doing something and kind of like basically want to do that yourself yeah or put like just always put your own type of touch on it stand out from the crowd Definitely don't take criticism to heart. If you do that, that's your first downfall and you're gonna put off put creating content yeah. and you're gonna go back down to the end of the ladder. If you're building, 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 you have to just keep building yeah. on what you're doing and growing and growing and growing. Separate yourself and make sure you have a good group of friends behind you that support you in every direction that you wanna go. And because if you don't have people backing you up or celebrating with you when you have like small little celebrations, you're not gonna feel good in yourself. Yeah. Make sure your family supports you. 
um, and definitely just give it 110 percent i'm sure like every single person out there could give instagram a go and go at it like because there is this great money in it there's great opportunities in it but it might not be for everyone yeah you know so obviously if you if you have a path and you have a plan of what direction you kind of want to go just go at 110 percent and give it your all absolutely and even when you were saying that there about um you know celebrate like you know have a good group of friends that'll celebrate the small wins it's so important to to look at you know each kind of little tiny milestone as a massive win absolutely yeah because you, you need to you need to have that kind of thing of like you know i'll often sit at home and I, I i remember doing it for the first time there a couple of months ago um and i listed all the achievements that i've had this year yeah i've seen it on your story yeah yeah, yeah. and when you, when you actually sit back and look at it you're like i actually achieved all that yeah and it's it's one of those things that'll push you forward and drive you forward but my next question then is and speaking of pushing forward and driving forward um you know what's next for the likes of you know your own personal page or Ireland stage or Ireland Jones is there anything coming up that you kind of it's completely new it's completely different or is the you know is have you got a plan in place for kind of where you're taking those pages next yeah um the buddy cup I need to start off with then it's so the buddy cup started off in COVID dived on the idea and um, gave 110 percent came up with a great name and um, I've had a great run with the trailers and stuff that I have had mm. so I'm waiting on two leases for two different units to get back to me and yep. um, it's not an overnight thing that that lease thing it's very frustrating there's an awful lot involved one of the units actually is a Dublin City Council unit so it has to go to a committee past that then it goes to the, all the people in the area then it goes back then there's so much paperwork involved so it's just a waiting game with that you know there's no point rushing into anything and yeah. um, I viewed another unit the other day out in Castle Knock so there's plenty of things going on, on the outside yeah. um, with the Buddy Cup. It's going in the right direction. We're looking at a rebrand now as well Lovely. Um, to change it into a Buddy Cafe when we do get it indoors. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, starting off on the small thing and setting up those trailers, people may say it's like a horse box and this and that, but I've had a great run with them. Yeah. A great one, and I still do it. Bar when the weather's like that. <laughs> Bar when the weather's like that. I'm after texting the girl that I have, um, Hannah is working in the buddy cup and kill at the moment i'm after texting if that rain is still like that i wouldn't have anyone working in that weather yeah so i said wrap up at 12 o'clock if the weather's still bad now yeah. the weather has stopped so we'll see what happens you know we're not it's not like it in here but there's plenty of direction to go when you do start off small yeah. you can only get bigger and bigger so and um, there's plenty of passion behind it plenty of ideas and yeah. there's a great team involved now obviously in there we're chopped now at the moment being around brian kent and the guys in there and um, it's motivating yeah to keep it going and obviously in the back of my head that i have it this far now I don't want it to ever go back down you know yeah. i have it there so i want to keep building on it Sounds. touching on the Ireland Yum sort of thing Ireland Yum is, is a difficult one because it's it's hard to kind of come up with an idea to generate money by not doing anything like website wise <laughs> website wise like yeah. obviously you can do the reviews and i love doing them i'm addicted to doing them and it's creating the real and the way i have it set up and I'm, I'm fast at doing them but turning that into a website is quite difficult especially with the likes of Groupon, there's a lot more involved of how to create this voucher, where I've, I've thought of it so many times before, how to create it into a voucher platform where people, like if I'm going somewhere, they can use this code on the website to scan, because people might not have the whole POS system. Yeah. So I, I just need, I need to have stop, I need to stop having so many fingers in different pies, because yeah. it's like 10 or 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, in all these different ideas. And if I took two out and I gave it then 33% each, there's more time going into it and it's going to be faster to progress. Yeah. But I'll come to that when it is. The, the, the Ireland Young's page is always going to be there. Um, I know there's a few other food pages popping up and, and trying to be like it, but there's, there's not much that's going to have the same sort of twist on it and the way I am, as you said, in the quick for our questions, professional content or rigid content. I like the way I put the feeler on it, yeah. you know, voice to voice over, you know, there's not many people doing that in Ireland. No. So long may it last. Happy days. My own page, um, business wise, business wise, again, it all kind of pushes towards the field page and mm. the buddy cup but the boxing side of things of course with the something that started out of nothing yeah it's called ben out last year for a, we're, and we were meant to do basically maybe you were meant to record it we we're meant to do a little video in the car so i'd collect ben like carpool karaoke but talking in the car about what we're doing throughout the week kind of like a small podcast then going to the gym and then finishing on something so ben would train me and then i'd bring him for something to eat mm. out of nowhere then i just got a bit smart i think i got a spurge of like <laughs> <laughs> you got one of your ADHD moments. Yeah, I want to hit him. You know what? I just want to hit him. Um, and I just called him out for a fight, like, and it just blew up. It has like 1.5 million views, and then people are saying, "Make it happen." And the ball just kept rolling, and rolling. And next of all, then there was a fight booked in yeah. in August, August fifth, um, and it was all for charity, and it was a great night. And um, now we have another one organised for December third. Savage. I'm going to be fighting Jamie Goonery. Ben is actually fighting two people on the night. Um, but it was an all-round, it was an amazing night, um, nothing at all went wrong, there was no trouble, there was no fights, 
um, just capacity wise wasn't enough like there was a thousand people that were at the event I don't think there's ever going to be a white collar event or a charity boxer fight in Ireland where there's a thousand people at it <laughs> yeah that's Never. huge numbers it's ridiculous so ho hopefully in December we can even push it to 1500 and um, it's again it's going to be for charity in some regard um, because it did cost an awful lot of money yep. to get set up the tent the bars this time there's two tents because you need to have the toilets because with that weather outside you can't be standing any urinal outside in that so not at all. we'll see what the crack is but boxing sort of thing has has really took off and yeah. there's other people trying to do it in the country now as well and it's, it's great like you know yeah. long may it last like it's but there was a, you kind of you managed to jump on a trend before it became a trend yeah boxing is now becoming yes it's, it's like instead of people going to the gym they're using boxing now as training oh i love it because the fact that like, i'm not on my phone mm. You know, and I, don't get me wrong, I like having people there like you were there this morning or even Darren Main when he's there to take the photos and stuff to look back on. But it's great for the headspace. Yeah. Amazing for the headspace. And the fact that I started, I threw my first punch, I'd say, the start of July is the earliest last year. Probably actually. Not last year, sorry, yeah. this year. The way that I started from something so small and something at the bottom, you can only get better and you can only improve. So it's great to see me improving. And even you saying this morning, you've come on a long way. Yeah. Because I've, I gave it 100%. Yeah. I was raging on it because I did miss... I did miss the fight. I was in surgery that day. Yeah. Uh, there was no way around it. Um, and I remember filming your first uh, session with, was it Dylan Moore? Dylan Moore, yeah, yeah. Shocking. And when he hit me, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> he hit me back. Like, this is only a video. You can't hit me. Yeah. <laughs> but you've, you have, you've progressed an awful long way. And I suppose it's kind of testament to the way you do things. It's all or nothing. It's 100% and it's a million miles an hour, as we talked about. Yeah. Um, I'm just a little think of where we are. I'd love to, I'd love to really watch that video now of me and Dylan Morris. I'm working on I still have the footage. Foot back. I have the, I'm looking like that. I'm like, oh, oh man, oh, you no. throwing a dig. I mean, oh, I my like, girlfriend would punch harder. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you love her. <laughs> I do love her. Um, she'd bat you. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> she'd still bat you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but that's another thing I want to actually ask, ask you about was, was collaborations with other creators. Um, and using that as a platform for growth. So Ben became a kind of a TikTok star very, very quickly. Yeah. Like, when you said, when you mentioned his name to me, I, just, I feel like I'm old now in the industry, mm -hmm. um, but I've been around for a long time with influencers, um, you know, models, photographers, uh, club owners, I, like you, you name it, like we've, we've been to parties with them, um, especially in the, in the Dublin and Irish scene. So. When you said, oh, there's this lad, Ben Williams, and I was like, oh, it's is, is this like, you know, Connor's way of, of giving back. Yeah. <laughs> but then I went on to his TikTok and he had more followers than you. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, holy God. Moses. But it, it, like, you know, how important is it uh, as an influencer to collaborate with other creators um, in order to grow your own business and to help them grow? Massively, massively. So he's getting followed. Like, that's, that's one of the main reasons we wanted to do this. But yeah. that was in the back of my head the whole time. The whole time. And I'm sure everyone knows that, but that was in the back of my head i was like i'm gonna grow on tiktok um and, and he's gonna grow on instagram yeah. so it's a crossover you know he's a different demographic on tiktok to me on instagram so i'm sending people and it's vice versa and that's what that was the plan from the get-go yeah you know it's gonna be a fight and it was a proper fight there was nothing like like as you can see ben came out trying to absolutely kill me in the first two rounds yeah um and, and it happened but the main thing was marketing yeah advertising ourselves growing yeah. You know, I think I started, before I started the fight camp, before I actually started the tease of starting the fight, I think I was on something like 130,000 followers on TikTok. Yeah. I'm now on 191,000. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, he's grown on TikTok off it as well. It's 200 and something, 213,000. He's 300,000. Is he? Yeah. Jesus. So, but it's, it was a great thing. And I definitely think if people are looking at this and they have a platform online, like reach out to these other people and cross over and do, plenty of people do makeup, do makeup together, mm. you know, makeup in the dark, challenges, like doing different things yeah. to spice an interest in it and grow, you know, because yeah. the outcome from that, like is going to be income. That's what I was looking at for. Like yeah. if I'm going to grow my followers more and more and more, more brands are going to be looking for me, more brands are going to look to do work for me. So that's going to be more income for me. So yeah. that's what we did from the get go, you know, yeah. and, and it worked very well. So why not run it back and do it again? Bigger and better. Absolutely. Uh, we, we look forward to that. I can't wait to go myself. Um, obviously, after missing the last one, I was raging. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have good fun at the next one. We'll have a big night out afterwards. 100%. Um, but uh, just speaking on brands uh, that you were talking about, have you? some of the questions that came in was, <laughs> you'd appreciate this one now. Um, is there anything that man wouldn't sell, he'd sell his granny? <laughs> right? That, that was one of the questions that got posed on Instagram. But is there any brands that you have turned down? Um, you don't have to name them, but you can you can let us know. Kind There's of. been a few like sexual brands 
that have reached out. In what regard? Johnny's. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck do you want me to do here? I was like, no, no. One of the lads then that owns a restaurant in town had like a uh, a dildo pitch. Like, and I was like, not a fucking chance. Like, he wants you to promote sex toys. Like, basically. Sure, you're a massive yeah. kid, child, like young audience. Like. Young audience wasn't doing that. But the Jurex one as well, they were like to me, yeah, and think about your own ideas to come back to us and we'll bounce it back to the client. And I was like, nah. I was like, no, I actually couldn't do that. <laughs> Could not do that at all. Like, you know. I don't think they make extra small anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to get those extra safe on now. Anyway. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, well, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, brands was. No, well, they all come into my DMs and stuff like that as well. If it was a small brand, if it's, it's a small business and you see me promoted on my Instagram page, I'm helping out that brand because I see them that they're trying to do something and trying to have a bit of passion. It's helping out, Yeah. you know? Big brands was big brands would actually select me as the to do the work or if they were selecting me they'd come to me then mm. through an agency and then like the client would go so would to go to the agency and the agency would have a bunch of people on so they'd pick the fifth for different things so the nine times out of ten if they say Connor X Y and Z wants to do work with you they're already gonna relate to what I'm doing so you don't need to turn it down because it already say, you already say oh yeah that makes sense. And are you signed with an agency at the moment, or is it just that these agencies kind of have you on the books? I'm not signed. I'm not signed. Um, I'm on an agency's website, um, but I'm not signed. I never wanted to sign anything because if an email comes directly to me, you if I was signed, you'd have to send to them, and then they'd get the twenty percent. Yeah. Sounds tight. Sounds greedy, but it's business. I yeah, think it's, it's managing yeah. yourself, and you see an awful lot of models will manage themselves now through Instagram and stuff like that. So there's definitely similarities with that. Yeah. And the way obviously the business then or an agency could pitch you might fall through. Yeah. But nine times out of ten with me, I'd be like, no, we'd work together and get something done here, get it done right with the opportunity to do it again. Yeah. You know, so always get the jobs in. Don't be throwing away jobs. Absolutely. You know? Um, I know you touched on there about better money and stuff like that. Now I don't ask you I ask you directly how much you get paid, but like, you know, how much do you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, propose like, you know, because that was one question that that I actually had friends asking, you know, when they were like, ask him how much it is for a post on, on his to get a post on his page. Well, I presume you do a kind of Job to job or business to business or yeah, I'd look at the business side of things. Um, the TikTok and the food reviews, they're all five hundred a pop. Okay. So the five hundred, it's a great price. Yeah. Great price considering what like there was a TikTok last week that has a hundred or uh, two hundred and eighty thousand views, and the Chinese is some of the Chinese have to be taken off just the with the outcome of like people going and trying it out because it looks that good. So the five hundred would include a TikTok. Um, the Instagram reel on the food page and on the stories then as well. And then the odd time I throw it on my own stories and then very seldom I throw it on actual reel on my own page because I wanna, don't want to have it everywhere, yeah. you know? But the 500 includes it all there. Um, it's a win-win for me, get 500 quid. And then it's a win for the, the food place, getting yeah. the money in. And the majority of the food places that I work with come back and want to do it again. Yeah. Because how many Chinese do you need to make back that 500 euro? Which isn't many. No. You know, if they get 20, 30 orders maybe, they're getting that, like, you know. But if you take an average order, like 30 quid, you know. Easily good. spend 50 quid in the Chinese, yeah. yeah. Easily, you know, especially the amount of food that they do get. Yeah. And if they're getting it between a few mates, it all adds up, you know, so. Yeah. So the 10 orders there, and there's your 500 quid made back, and then everything else is pure profit then? Absolutely, yeah. you know. Just yeah, just that 500 just goes into the car, and the car just swallows it. <laughs> a 20 euro pop, you know. Take it six months. One thing that I have kept 100% since I started now is that rate for the food. Like, I haven't changed it since I've grown up. Yeah. On the on this like following wise side sort of things, but some restaurants don't really understand it, you know, and they try to be little yet a little bit, and you have to kind of put your foot like your foot down and say, no, I know what comes from this because I do know, and yeah. I've seen numbers, and I know different places, and yeah. the results might not always be the same. They'd be up and down, but yeah. they'd be like, no, that's way out of budget. Could you do it for the food? And I'm like, well, no, I can't. Yeah. Because you're gonna make so much money off the back of me, and this is my main source of income. So. Yeah. You know, you kind of have to. You have that. You have to have that respect for yourself as well when it comes to pricing. I mean, yeah. I get it all the time as well. Like, oh, you send over a price, and you almost. It's now gotten to the point where I will send over a price with negotiation built in. Because mm -hmm. um, no matter what you do, you're going to be. Oh, come down. A little, can you do this or can you do that? It does. You know, with certain clients, you, and especially when you're getting content that's going to be shown on the website for the rest of their, you know, the product's life, mm -hmm. uh, or your, you know. <clears throat> You're shooting kind of um, like even like some of the promo stuff that we do, and we you can end up with like you know fifty or sixty photos from from a full day of a beauty shoot. Um, those fifty or sixty photos are going to be used in print. They're going to be used in branding, marketing, advertisement, email lists, websites, uh, road shows. Like you name it, it's going to be used yeah. everywhere. You're making maximum amount of what you can do. Making the max out of it. So why shouldn't I? Exactly. Right. 
Yeah. Um, but talking about uh, big brands, have you anything coming up with a big brand that you're really excited about? Um, that you can talk about? See, I don't know. I won't be able to name any brands. Okay. Definitely won't be able, able to name any brands and stuff like that. But, well, I am able to name this fight store where I got the boxing gloves last week. They're working on something cool for me for my shorts for December. Savage. So last last time we just all kind of wore the same red and black, but yeah. this year I'm getting my shorts made. So they're gonna be white and gold. I won't give too much away, but I like my funky type of bits, so there's gonna be plenty, plenty going on out there. Little tassels and Shout all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. new <laughs> little tail and all <laughs> wrapping around his neck and tie him up. Um but brand was there's always cool stuff there. Um and you always ask, are you interested? And then sometimes it just falls through. But there's one thing that I'm very close to doing, which would be sponsored by a car. Mm. This car company. I don't. We talked about this. Yeah, I don't want to name the car company in case they, they get given out to and stuff. But <laughs> I'm basically going to be getting the car on a two month trial in return for content to get it out there, which I'm absolutely buzzing about yeah. because I do do serious miles the car and I sit in that car. So it's be nice to sit in a different car. But hopefully that kind of kicks on and maybe something in the new year then with the car for a full year or so. But depending on the content, we've already spoke about the ideas and what the content I want to do. So absolutely. please go with that. And there's a few food brands as well huge ones yeah. well well known and um, that are looking to do bits of work like you know but the only thing about the campaign side of things is i'd like to do something like monthly instead of doing a once off yeah you know almost like a monthly retainer yeah a monthly retainer would be not like and i do it probably cheaper than the one post yeah you know but it'll just keep you going and if you got that for three months it would make more sense but it's not how the brands work like no you know usually one offs um i want to jump back to you were talking about the buddy cup and you gave us great information on the buddy cup but when did the the idea for the Buddy Cup, I know you said it was during lockdown, um, but did the idea for the Buddy Cup kind of, was it seeing other people doing it and you thought you could do it better or was it just that there, here's an opportunity, there's nothing around here, let's just do it? It actually, because like, Butler's around the corner from the Buddy Cup was the only place that was kind of open. Just ain't there, runners. Um, the Buddy Cup, the Butler's was only open, or Butler's, sorry, was open uh, the whole time during lockdown Yeah, and I was spending a fortune there. I was spending like three, three eighty, uh, well not sure fortune, but three eighty a day, mm. getting a coffee there. So that idea bounced off. Then seeing other people are doing this type of thing, and I just said, "Fuck, it, I'm gonna buy it." I bought the trailer before I had a location. Yeah, before I had anything. Bought the trailer. Didn't have a name, and then I do have. A, I done a TikTok before of it. Put it in the name in the bubble horse box. Names around it like a what's that called again? Brainstorm. Yeah, brainstorm the idea. Then I went through my own knowledge of basically what you need. So you need your insurance. You need your like your public liability insurance you need the location and i just ran through each one yeah and got just them all ticked off, ticked off, off take them off step by step and i turned around quite quickly and then i had a location right around the corner from the house Dead water hand. there power there and it's just been a blessing you Absolutely. know but the idea the idea came from me doing nothing so sometimes doing nothing you can spark an idea else, you know yeah like i was just sitting at home yeah like so the majority of people were just sitting there i was on a shoot there yesterday and uh I was <clears throat> the two people that were that were modeling first were or, well when I say modeling they were they, they were they were modeling first but it, it was a press uh, a press shoot and it was for a piece that they were writing themselves and they said to us we were cause we were talking about inspiration and what time is best you know where when do you get the best out of your own mind so like is, do you write early in the morning do you write late in the evening mm -hmm. um, and they actually said you know what like sometimes I I just have to walk away for the ideas to come yeah you know, I have to step away from anything yeah and ideas will just start flowing out of nowhere. Yeah. So I completely understand where you're coming from. And even when I'm doing edits, sometimes I just have to go for a little drive or I'll go with I the I think the driving is great. Driving's yeah. great for it. Yeah, you're zoning out. Yeah. And yeah. Just, you end up having conversations with yourself because no one else can hear you. Yeah. So you don't sound like you're going mad to everyone else. 100%. But yeah. it gives you the opportunity to kind of bounce ideas off yourself and kind of, well, is that a good idea? And if you say, like, oh, no, it's not. And then you ask yourself, why not? And you can't think of a reason. Well, then it's a good idea. Good idea. And then yeah. you go for it. But I like what you did there with the, you know, Break it all down into small, biteable chunks. Mm -hmm. That was a really smart idea, and I'm sure you've gotten loads of ideas then off Brian from Chopped as well. It's just motivating, you know, like the way he just motors along, like, and nothing can get in the way of stopping him. That's kind of that's kind of what I want to be doing, you know. Yeah. And I don't want to like I'm looking at him doing his knee pizza, and I'm looking at doing this. Like he start had to start somewhere as well, you know. Yeah. So there's no point looking at someone, especially for starting off online and saying, "Oh Jesus, look at him, he's flying." Just take your own space, your own pace, your own ideas, and it will come. If you have in the back of your head that you are going to be successful and you are going to make everyone say well done to you and you're going to go in the right direction, then just, there's no rush, you know? Like, ideas will come to me and the Buddy Cup won't be the last thing that I'll bring out and it won't be the only thing that I'll bring out, probably 10 more things that will fail, but I will get another good thing and I will get another, I'll keep going and I'll just try my best to be 
what I want to be and that's working on my own and just making people happily around me and saying well done to yourself you know yeah that's it well thanks a million Colin it's been Thank an absolute much. pleasure thanks very much for having us um we're going to leave any kind of any links for, for any of the information down below I think we said there was a couple of things that we we're going to throw up on the screen yeah. and stuff like that I'll throw in that business plan as well to you because I do have that as a TikTok the one where I was writing down the buddy oh, yeah, thing. send that in anyway as well absolutely send it in and because uh, there's plenty of people that do want to start up their own business and you need this information basically to run it through to register to set it up the insurance the location accountants fast oh, oh. They're pain in the hole <laughs> In the hall. <laughs> I don't like them myself. No, no it's just this is an awful lot. It, it, no. It's an awful lot, even now, for managing, like trying to manage yourself and a business by yourself when you're the only employee. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. It's an awful lot. It's an awful lot. Yeah, we're turning off the only. It, uh, actually, it nearly would. And they keep saying, like, you owe more money. I'm like, what do you mean I owe more yeah. money? I just haven't even got paid. <laughs> oh, you have more money. <laughs> But listen, you have the fight. What dates are coming up on? The fight is on December 3rd. It's going to be in the Red Cow again, and tickets will be going on sale very, very soon. Jamie Gunnery, get ready. <laughs> Thanks a million, guys. Thank you.